I'd like everyone to join me in a moment of silence. Thank you. And the pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We do have some public hearings today. If you're here for a public hearing, there should be a sign-up sheet in the back. Don't everybody rush at one time. <laughs> And we'll start with Positively Carol, but we have, Chris, you have something to, to put up for Positively Carol? Yeah, I'm just going to take about two, All right. two minutes of your time this morning to give you a little update with uh, what we've been, the project we've been doing with the website redesign with Cortegrity. Uh, first of all, I have to say that Cortegrity has done a bang up job on this project so far and will continue to do such. We've been on conference calls every Monday, and uh, this is what we've got so far. We've only got two pages to demo today. For what the website redesign looks like. And here would be our home page. Wow. And you'll see the iconography here. Um, as we go down, the search engine is not working, of course, yet, but it will be very robust when we have it online in the next few months. Uh, here's information where County News. The great first picture. It, see, I doctored that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and here's our. Commissioner's Corner, you'll see this where it uh, dissolves through the commissioners. You're going to fix the aspect ratios? Yeah. For the, you're going to fix them for the. Oh, uh, this is just a demo, so okay. there are there are a lot of things that aren't pristine yet. We're still running, and I don't we don't even have access to it yet. This is all being done by the design for Cortegrity. Mm -hmm. uh, the calendar. This is very key. This I is like that. this yeah. is a widget, so this is still being adapted at this point also, but you can see the display of what it's going to kind of look like for the uh, our visitors. And you'll see we even have some upcoming events. And then we have what's called the featured area. This doesn't necessarily have to be a department, but for example, when we have our budget seasons, we put budget in there and information about that. All right, we do have a department page that's working yet, and that's parks. And as you can see, there's the banner. What I really like about what they've done is the header here follows you while you're going down. Mm -hmm. And all of this is adaptable in a mobile version too, which I've also seen just uh, screenshots of so far, which looks fantastic. Uh, it's really very, very helpful. And as you can see, we get three parks. All of this is changeable by ourselves once it's handed over with the content man management system. And that's really all I have to show today. So, Chris, question for you. Yes, One sir. One of the things that I get the most calls about for the last five years has been like things like the Second Amendment Preservation Resolution. How will uh, how will a, a user find that? How will, how will you take an important document like that and make it accessible to them? Well, we have we have some regulatory area here at the footer. We also have what we well, did. Wait, 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 back up, back up to the regulatory area. <coughs> I, I, so I don't really see anything there it's, that would. That this would is just rough so far. We haven't, we haven't done the content migration commissioner from our current website to what's going to be the okay, new redesign. So perhaps uh, a menu item along the line of popular, most requested documents or most requested links, something like sure. that, where we could put it. We could certainly do that. So we can direct them to that. We could create its own page. I've lost track of how many people I've called. Uh, they've called me and I've said, this is how you get there. Well, one thing we did do recently was we made sure that each of commissioner has specific interests and we have those commissioner initiatives on the current website. So all of those things are right there also. And that's good, but I think some of these things, uh, I can think of multiple things, whether it's the Freedom Plan, whether it is the Second Amendment Preservation Resolution, they transcend any commissioner. They are things of broad interest to the whole they, county. Sure. They do, but they also... I mean, that's something they could access by the search capability, Absolutely. Right? So if someone just gets to that top bar and searches for it, they should be able to navigate. Absolutely. Which you really don't have that right right now. Uh, I'm sure it would come up, way. but it'd be, it's not as uh, yeah. robust and as intelligent right. as what our, our search okay. will be with this. All right. Yeah. And what is, do we have a, a target 
date for going live? Our, our target date was you know, we're only today. Here, we're only here, for, yeah, <laughs> to be honest. We're here for a couple more hours. So, so what we did was, Commissioner, we really pushed. Uh, Cortegarty stepped up to the plate and got these two pages so we could lease demo so you could see what it's going to sure. how the navigation is going to work. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we had some things hold us up, as you know, and yeah. so we're going to move forward. We're going to look. We're looking to have this ready for December. Okay. The ITS starts their code, what's called the code training, on Friday, mm -hmm. so tomorrow. Uh, and from there, we'll start, we're going to launch the site, then we're going to start our internal <clears throat> training gotcha. for departments to learn how to make changes to their individual pages. Mm -hmm. I'll, I mean, I'll be on hand for all of that, of course, yep. and the code training. So, all right. Well, and I'm, this is a, I want to make sure that this isn't in yet, but this part right here is a carousel. So these will be images that, that slide through. Gotcha. So we can highlight the Second Amendment, whatever we choose to put right. in that. Right. Um, well, I, I just want to say, I know uh, you've worked very hard on this. I, I think this is a huge, huge step forward. Uh, I think it's inviting. I think it's going to be much more navigable. I think the ability to access information, two-way communication. Um, and I think when we started thinking about what are we seeing from other jurisdictions that we'd really like to see? Uh, you know, you've captured that. You know, ease of use, speed, those kinds of things. The devil will be, of course, in the details when you get it. Yeah. Get it up and running. Um, but uh, but I, I think uh, in, in terms of something that was a priority, uh, I feel like you, you know we've done a nice job. So thank you. Good job. As Cortegerty said in our training last week, that this is a journey. This yeah. is something that will grow as we. Uh, go further and further into it, and I think very happy with the work they've this done is so far. User friendly, I like. Yeah, absolutely, it. and the mobile yeah. version looks fantastic, which I, I can't like show to you yet. I think maybe even I could navigate this, and that's a you can. Plus. I'll give you access, and you can <laughs> change your own page if you'd like, Commissioner. So, scroll back down. Yes. How about on the front, from the landing page, but, but lower, no, the other direction. Keep, keep going up towards Hello? the top. Yes. So, I mean, how about on the landing page? Um, something like maybe an American flag to help brand us? As you, we'll one of the things that you probably here. can't see yet is there's an American flag embedded in the commissioner's corner here. Um, that, when we, when we printed it out, you can see it better. Well, I'm talking about the landing page. I, I, think, I think on the landing page, I mean, you know, Carroll County, let, let me just we, say something real quick. This is my last session. I'll ask my commissioners to just bear with me for just one minute. I'll make it short, but you know, you know, I've, I've done a lot of thinking about this issue of marketing the county, and I've looked at how other jurisdictions, and you've all seen a video. I showed you a video from Tennessee that you all saw. I think all of you have seen it. You know, if you're going to have a marketing campaign, you need to know who your target market is. If you want to sell hair tonic that makes hair grow, you target bald men and women, right? You, and and in fact, is the people most likely to move to Carroll County right now are people in surrounding counties that are fed up with the politics of the surrounding counties and want to come to the last red county remaining around here. And, and I think that symbols like American flags are consistent with that branding because those are people we can get. People are not going to move here from Pennsylvania or Tennessee. They're going to come here from Montgomery, Howard, Baltimore, Frederick, and they're just fed up with the politics there, and they want to come here because they view this county as being more consistent with their basic sensibilities. And, and we should target that in everything we do, our marketing campaign, our website, so when they see this, it resonates with them. They go, yeah, this is where I want to be. You know, Doug, when we passed the Second Amendment Preservation Resolution, I, I got probably 50 different emails, letters, and people say, I'm going to move to Carroll County because you guys stand for something. We ought to decide what we stand for, which I think is the last remaining Red County. We ought to promote it and try to get people to come here. We can get them now. We're going to make <coughs> changes to this website once we get to that point yeah. with, that, with that other well, campaign. I was going to say, I think we have two parallel projects yes. going, the marketing and the website. Yeah. They will converge at some point. Yeah. I do think, and it's funny, it's one of the last meetings I had that will be with an outside agency, but... Um, the discussion I had this morning uh, was actually about celebrating America. You and, yeah. you know, I think we've done some things with that, but I think we've done a fraction of it that we could do. Um, that whole notion of celebrating America and the way that we, weaving that through everything from agriculture to STEM to uh, just what, what you said really is why people, the things they like about here 
are, you know, it's like where you can still find a little taste of America. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. I think is something that I'd like to see, you know, hopefully as those discussions go forward, representation here, the marketing, and, and even ways to connect that even stronger. That says a lot about us. There are not a lot, there are a lot of places, let me say this correctly, there are a lot of places that are not celebrating America today. That's correct. And, 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 and that is one of the underlying biggest problems I think we have. Even the people that are doing the right things in some cases, from a policy standpoint, are doing them in a way that doesn't embrace that whole notion right. that you couldn't yeah. do this everywhere. Yeah, you couldn't, I, you know. Yeah. So anyhow, I, I think those kinds of things. So, so, so and I, I'm going to agree with you again because, I mean, just to have the Celebrate America insignia on the front that says Celebrate America in Carroll County, that's the low-hanging fruit. And it is why people people will come here. Yeah. And although marketing campaigns like Rise and Shine or certainly have a nice kind of rhymy rhythm to them, they don't really say anything. They, if, I, if I'm living in, in Howard County and I'm frustrated because I know that the new county executive wants to make it a sanctuary county, and that's a fact because I've talked to them, all right, Rise and Shine doesn't say anything. But if I see Celebrate America in Carroll County, it means something to me. You know, I think I'm going to go to Carroll County and live. And these are hardworking, productive people that share an interest in the Carroll County culture as it currently exists, the culture points of Carroll County. Well, and I think also it's not an exclusionary message, it's an inclusionary message. It is the things that are great about America. Uh, you know, it, this is not about, so anyhow, but I think you, you get the idea, I Absolutely. think, you know, but from a technical standpoint, from a getting that groundwork done, that's a huge move. Um, so thank you. We're excited. That, yeah. Well, I'm going to let Bonnie take. Okay. She's going to blow me out of the water, sorry, but. <laughs> Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning, Bonnie. Thank you for allowing me to share a few positively Carol things this morning. Uh, first of all, you'll find at your spot there, our new 2019 Visitor's Guide was just delivered yesterday. Uh, we got 55,000 copies printed and they will be distributed throughout all the welcome centers, visitor centers. Uh, they also go out to all the people who uh, respond to ads that we place in, uh, in different publications. So we were excited to get that out already. So hopefully you uh, think that looks good. This looks very nice. We're a glance through it already. It's uh, mm -hmm. very comprehensive. It has a lot of dates, a lot of things to right. do. So anybody right. visiting okay. Carroll County yeah. should not be uh, wanting to find something to uh, get involved in. Where's the message from the board president? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> uh, you can you keep looking in the back. <laughs> Make sure the paper gets <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. And my second thing is I would like to share, I attended the Maryland Tourism and Travel Summit a few weeks ago and Carroll County received this award for the best uh, product or event, which is the Barn Quilt Trail. Nice. So we were very proud to receive this because this is the first time Carroll County has ever won anything. So uh, it, was, it was a very good surprise to me. So I was proud to accept it on behalf of the county. Maybe sure. we should get a picture with the commissioners and you in the middle holding that. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Why don't we do that? Are you having anything else? And one more thing. Oh, um, I received word from the Maryland Office of Tourism that um, the Tourism Office for Carroll County is going to receive $51,000 grant this year to help with our advertising efforts. And that's up 18,000 from last year. So I was very good. happy about that as well. Well, uh, I think, so. uh, I know we're gonna take a picture, but you know, Bonnie, you do an extraordinary job. Um, uh, you are everywhere. Um, and the, uh, um, I know it's not always within sort of the, the normal nine to five. Sometimes it's in various uh, degrees of costume. Um, okay. And, um, uh, and your, your uh, able driver, I see, see just uh, right came now. in the background oh, there. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but uh, so if, if you felt a little reflective light okay. coming from the That's back, that was what? that was Jack. Um, but no, I mean, you really uh, go out of your way to do an extraordinary job representing Carroll County very, very well. well and you make you. it fun, that. and you make it inviting, and we love seeing you at events. So, great thank job, you. really great job. And to you as well, Mr. Bonnie. Yeah. Jack always yeah. tells me you're one of the top 20 people in that department. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Bonnie, I will tell you, the floating cubes you have, mm -hmm. I first looked down and thought, they're a little strange. But you are on the cutting edge of what advertising is today. With I found out only the, uh, 
I guess most elite cities are using those right now for advertising, and you're using it for your quilt trail. So mm -hmm. I'm really, uh, I have to keep up with the times, I guess, what it amounts to. Not the paper, that is, okay? <laughs> she, just totally, she totally ignored me on that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I did okay. hear okay. some pictures. They thought it was a little bit modern, but uh, I thought they were cute. Come on up, honey. They want to give you a big hug. Okay. Thank you, congratulations. We'll Photoshop the other one in. Well, it's been very positive so far this morning. Yeah, very positive. Does anyone have anything else to add for positively, Carol? I'd just like to say, uh, Commissioner Frazier and I were at the uh, HSP groundbreaking ceremony yesterday, uh, and that was uh, a nice event. Um, it's a new facility coming to Westminster. I think uh, it's going to really move things along, helping people get back on their feet and moving in the right uh, direction. And while we have the microphone here, I do want to mention Friday night, Hampstead tree lighting ceremony, 7 o'clock. Downtown Hampstead, major event. <laughs> Mr. Burke, I guess you'll be there. As usual, to light the tree, bring the family. Uh, it's a kids' event, uh, which is great. And December 10th, right out front, the trees get lit here. It's next week, uh, whatever day. Monday, I think. Monday. Uh, anyway, there'll be the carousel put up and the tree lighting here. So uh, if you uh, want to take your wife, uh, friend out, or kids, come to some of the tree lightings and. Uh, Enjoy Carroll County. Right, they, you know, they lit the tree up at the Rockefeller Center in the White House, and we wait till after that so the crowds, because we don't want to split the crowd up between three different venues. So now people can do, you know, all three if you wanted to. That's why we're doing ours later. But it's, it's good. And also, I have to say about the HSP groundbreaking, I like things like that because when when we help people around the county, and the HSP helps everyone, you know, around the county, I, I look at it giving them a hand up and not a handout. Hopefully what we do, or HSP does, and, and the nonprofits do, help these people get on their feet again, help them through some tough times so they can become productive citizens for Carroll County, and of course, contribute to our tax base. But I think, so I think the HSP groundbreaking is a great thing. Anything else for Positively, Carol? All right, let's move on to our first item. We have a public hearing on a financial assurance plan. We have Tom Devilvis, Gail Ingalls, Brenda Dine, Tim Burke, I believe. Tim, you can stay there. It's okay. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Good morning. We're here today for you to hold a public hearing regarding the financial assurance plan that has been advertised duly as uh, needed. We uh, briefed you on that on November 8th when we asked to hold this hearing. Just as a reminder, this financial assurance plan, it is part of a requirement by the state of Maryland under uh, Section 4-202 of the uh, Annotated Code of Maryland is related to the stormwater protection and restoration program, which again is related to stormwater remediation fees. Uh, this particular public hearing and this process that we're going through right now is required every two years. So 2018 is the year that we have to submit what we call a full blown financial assurance plan to the state. And the purpose of that is to show that we've adequately funded our stormwater remediation program for our national pollutant discharge elimination system, municipal separate stormwater phase one permit. Still got it. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, and so that is to ensure that we funded it adequately this year and for the next two years uh, there was adequate funding for this program, which as Carroll County always has, we do adequately fund our, our stormwater remediation process. So today is the opportunity for uh, the public to provide input. Uh, at that point in time, we uh, would hope that you would consider the uh, approval of this plan so that we can submit it. It is due to be submitted by the end of, of this uh, year, 2018, excuse me. <laughs> Don't get ahead of yourself. Yeah. <laughs> All right, okay. Mr. Burke, do we have anybody? We have no comment cards, but does any member of the public have any comment on the financial assistance plan as proposed? All right, then I guess we need a 
Motion to close the public hearing. Mr. President, I'll move to close the public hearing. Leave the record open for 10 days. Oh, can I? Check. Oh. I'm sorry. Do you not want the record open? There is no requirement to hold it open for 10 days. Commissioners, if you would like to move forward, that's, that's completely up to you. In other words, the new board will be brought on. They'll have to be brought up. It's up to you. Well, in the interest of um, moving forward on something that has no public comment, I mean, I'll rescind the motion. Um, I'll throw it back to you. Do we want to have some discussion on it? Or what, what are we looking to do? Well, I mean, I, I'm okay with closing the public hearing and, and uh, accepting the uh, financial assurance plan. All right. well, I don't know how the other commissioners feel, but I'm, I'm, I'll be okay with that. I didn't see any great heartache with anything i think you've done a great job uh, putting this together and i think it was brought out last week when we were talking about the noxy river the type of jobs you guys are doing here mm -hmm. um, thank so. you and, and again this this plan not just with the bureau of resource management and, and ms ingles but our budget office uh, lynn carr and our county's office with uh doreen have been great process here I don't always agree with your outcomes, but I agree with what you're doing and you do a bang up job on it. So. We appreciate that, Commissioner. <laughs> Mr. President, in that case, I will make a motion that we accept the financial assurance plan. No second. All right, we have a motion and a second to close the public hearing and accept the financial assurance plan. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Now we're moving on to a public hearing for code changes for Chapter 151, Stormwater, and Chapter 152, Grading and Sediment Control. Okay, thank you, Commissioners. Well, Mr. President, this, was a, this is a public hearing on yes. the ordinance amendment. You mentioned it, uh, it was advertised in the Carroll County Times on November 15th, and November 22nd, two thousand eighteen. Uh, Carroll County Times Commissioner Tom and Gale are still there, and they can give you a proposed summary of the uh, legislation. Yes. Again, we presented these to you on November 8th. Uh, they are two separate chapters of our Carroll County Code. The 151 is the Stormwater Management Code, and the 152 is the Sediment and Erosion Control. At that time, you did ask for some revisions to those, and we did follow through and make those revisions. We forwarded those to you, I think, on November 13th, and I think we did get a response from Commissioner Rothschild that, that you were, uh, I think, pleased or happy with those changes that we we put in I got one word that's troubling me just one word okay. I'm sorry but we could probably fix that administratively but I won't let you finish your presentation no it's no the very end it goes back to the to the penalties again I'm sorry okay but well, you can go All through right. your presentation then we can talk about it when we get no there. no that's so okay I think you'll be okay with, with my concern when we fix it and we can fix it all right so within chapter 151 which again is the stormwater management we made numerous um, slight modifications to it both some of which were state mandated and some of which were uh, staff generated. Most of them were clarifications on uh, policies or procedures that we are doing now, uh, implementing through a policy. Uh, we also made uh, subsequent changes to the stormwater management manual, which match up with the code changes that we were proposing at that time. In chapter 152, the grading erosion sediment control, again, we made modifications based on some state requirements. Most of those were required by the state. There are new legislation that passed through the state, and those items we felt actually made the sediment and erosion control chapter, uh, for lack of a better term, more lenient and more, more workable. So again, those recommendations, all those changes, we would highly recommend the Board of Commissioners consider at this time. Just one clarification. Yes, sir. Um, I guess it's on page 11. Um, uh, which one, sir? Is it? Oh, uh, it's 151.016. Okay. 01, okay. 5,000 square feet of disturbed area is cumulative over what period of time? It's a cumulative basically forever. So if, if you disturb 5,000 square foot in 2011 mm. and you disturb another in 2017, that's considered 10,000 total square foot on that property. And so as the years go on, um, that becomes an accumulative, just similar to the forest conservation law with the 40,000. Okay, isn't that kind of, uh, I guess, harsh over, it could be 20 years difference and still could add up, or 30 years. 
That's correct, Commissioner. And I will say that this is a, a state requirement. This is not a, a county implemented requirement. Okay, so we, but you're right. A lot of times, what we'll see, just an example, people will come in and they'll come in with a 4,999 foot disturbed area um, with whatever activity they may be doing. Right. And, you know, we try to make sure they know, and I think their engineers and consultants also. You know, if you want to come back in and make a modification, the minute you come back in, you add one more square, you know, two more square feet, you're you're in the code. You know, you're fully in it then. Okay, so that's cumulative over any time forever. period, sir. Any time period. That's a lot. <laughs> I mean, you know, I will not. I would say over five, ten years, or whatever, because you know things are going to get replanted, regrown, and. 10 year period or 20 year period is not what he knows it was done. Now they're restricted in the future. Uh, that's correct. I, I don't know any way to answer other than that's the state mandated number. We can't, we can't, we can make it more stringent. We can make it less than five, <laughs> but we can't make it more, hmm. unfortunately. Interesting. Interesting. Is this something for our state delegation to look at? That would be the way that you would have to do it because it is in uh, the stormwater law. So the law would have to be changed. Is there anything yes. that prohibit, would prohibit us from adding language to the effect except under, uh, under exceptional circumstances so that when something ridiculous happens and we know it will, we have the ability to make an exception? Are you asking can we do that? We cannot, no. Well, actually we can. We can if we want, we could do it. But I could just imagine some farmer it's got 100 acres and he disturbs 6,000 square feet over 30 years and next thing you know somebody well, saying no no can do well when you say a farmer sir if that farmer is developing his property or, or doing work and yes that this would apply it's not it's not based on farming practices I know, and if they he are a, he builds a barn and then for whatever reason he decides he needs another thousand square feet and he's up to 6,000 this is over 30 it doesn't period. Apply he's got a hundred acres yeah residential I'll defer to Ms. Ingalls, but I do believe if you're working on a soil water conservation plan, if you are working with our district, they will handle the stormwater issue, but you still have to manage stormwater, yes. Yeah. So we, we will look at the stormwater for ag as well. This is similar to what we look at it for development. It the sediment control is handled by soil conservation. But I will say with the development for stormwater, when you reach that 5,000 threshold, it's gonna be reviewed by staff as as 5,000 square foot of disturbance. So when you come back in, if you were 6,000, that 5,000 will be looked at again, but it'll, it won't be uh, re, I'm gonna, let, let me defer to Martin, I guess. Let, let, Martin, if you got a hand. Before he responds, so you know, a, guy, yeah. a farmer creates a 5,000 square foot barn and 15 years from the sides, he needs a, he needs a tool shed that's up to 500 square feet. And we're gonna force him through a, through a, through a complete stormwater management plan because he adds a 500 square foot Tool shed that's handled differently than yeah. developed. Just, um, which you saw. Yes. This. It's under the exemptions. exemptions. Here I got it. I got it. Right. Well, if it's a farmer, but let's that one first off. Just and he's for example, it could be right. A, right but the farmers are very good because we commercial have commercial business. Okay. Well. They're, they're a little bit different. If it's a farmer and he's working with the Soil Conservation District and he has a plan for, for the Soil Conservation District, we've, been, we've exempted that entirely. That's a separate exemption. Okay. So if a farmer has that all part of his of That his, plan may be more stringent than your correct. plan. Correct. All right, so let's so, take the other so scenario. If he's working with that, and no I, I, I highly encourage any farmer to do that, you know, right, to work with him. So a commercial business on three acre has this builds a 5,000 square foot whatever and then 10 years later they decide they want to put in a 500 square foot tool shed. What happens to that? If we, if we have given them an exemption letter the first time, we'll, we'll write right on there that they're exempt, but that that's cumulative. So when they come back, then they come back and they have to look at that area that they worked in. So that would be the lot that the whole thing becomes part of it then. No, but they did with Marty. Come on, I love you, buddy, but we're not I, answering the question. I, I know he that. He builds 5,000. He wants to add another 500. He's, he's, he's he builds 4,999 and wants to build another 500. Ten he, years later for tool shed, he's, he's, he's going to get right through the coals. Right, he's he's over the line. It's going to cost you a zillion dollars to put in your lousy 500-square-foot shed. 
A zillion dollars I, might be a little much. But I think that's a little bit right. exaggerated. Well, certainly yes. thousands of dollars. Thousands that's of possible. Dollars. Would they have to go back then and reinstitute all the stormwater management for the first part to get that 500 square feet for the second part? Mr. Covington. The answer is yes. We look at that. We look at they're no longer exempt. They're in. So within right. the area that they're working, we look at the we look at that area. But aren't we going to have that issue no matter what number we choose to be the limiting factor? I mean, I mean the yes. idea kind yes. of becomes is the is that the right number? Which I think is a fair question. But no matter what number you pick, right? Yes. Someone can be two hundred away from that number and do something that's well, five hundred more feet and. Sure. Right. sure. As Ms. Ingalls indicated, with the forestry, the, it's 40,000 square foot cut off. So we have folks come in with 39,999 square right. foot so of disturbance let me try, let me try to get another, out of the forestry. Let me try another angle. Right. Type of and everybody's got the same issue, mm -hmm. which is it's yeah. an arbitrary number, yes. but it's, you got to have a number. So let me try another angle with this. You see where I'm going with this. I, I understand what you're dealing with here. I understand the state is breathing down our backs, but there'll be many circumstances where somebody's in the middle of nowhere. And, and they've got their 5,000 square foot developed, and clearly there's ample stormwater management. There's, why can't we, I don't even want to ask why, because I know we can, if we, if we get three votes, we could. We should put language in here that says that, uh, that this is required unless the, the, uh, the uh, owner can demonstrate that the incremental building uh, there's already sufficient capacity for stormwater management to handle the incremental runoff without the need to go through a comprehensive stormwater management plan all over again. The There's going to be some class times where you can just look at it and see, oh, sure, you got a drain right here that goes down into the stream. Another 500 square foot is, is, is nothing. It's the minimus. Well, There'll well, be other cases where you've already got reports of puddling at the adjacent buildings or adjacent property owners, and you know it's going to be a problem. As you see what I'm saying? So we say we, we require it in cases where there's, a, where there's some evidence that it, would, it might create a problem, but in cases where it clearly would not present a problem, we, we simply provide some kind of written explanation to that and, and, and exempt them from having to do the whole plan over again. Unfortunately, that's, the law does not allow us to do that. And what I will say, Commissioner, is, and Mr. Covington can correct me, but there are opportunities where people, if they are out in, quote, the middle of nowhere, and say they have grass all around the facility they're building and all, they can direct that runoff onto that grass area. And if it has the proper slope and a proper distance, that can be their stormwater. So they may not have to do that. And in fact, I would say most people out in the outer areas that have flat areas or better properties that they have ample room to, to direct stormwater onto and disperse it onto, that is their stormwater. Is that correct, Mr. That's right. So, so if that, that, they if have that, that opportunity. So if that's the case, what's the burden on them to put together that information so that they can move forward? Is it, does it have to be as comprehensive as what they would have done the first time? Is it? Good question. Mr. If Cubs. they're doing that on a small building and uh -huh. they're able to grade around it, and that's, we do it, we call that stormwater by grading. Um, typically that comes in as part of a plot plan that's part of their building permit and we approve it off that plot plan from building permit. Okay, so it wouldn't require them necessarily to go through the kind of process they'd have to go through. Typically, it, those are done as part of the building permit gotcha. process. I mean, it is a review, but it's part of the building permit process <coughs> rather than Much abbreviated, yeah. Mr. Right. Much right. abbreviated. Right. What would be the cost differential between the first 5,000 square feet and that extra 500? It's all over. It, yeah, the, you have to get a some, you have to get a surveyor to draw it out and show me that uh, show us that information, not me, me or Myron or whoever's looking at it. That information, so whatever that cost is on that couple eight half by elevens, and and a letter with it, those are still pretty small in comparison to a stormwater <coughs> plant. But you up the price by several thousand dollars anyway on a project, correct? Could uh, be up to thirty thousand, depends on what they're doing. Well, it depends on the, the, the size improvement they make, Commissioner. Mm -hmm. Yes, I would say so. It, it certainly does that. I mean, and, and if you don't have the grading opportunity that Mr. Covering is talking about and say you want to do put it in the ground, um, then depending on how much size you have, you know, it depends on how much materials you have to use. Yes, the prices can vary tremendously. Mm -hmm. The other good alternative is in those situations is a grass swale where you run a long enough uh, grass area to make the water disappear into the right. 
That's the other. But this is all state regulation, right? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. <clears throat> any other questions? Do you have anybody for the public hearing? Uh, Mr. Rothschild, you have going to make a suggestion to him? Oh, yes. in the, in the uh, penalty section again? Yes. Are we in 151 now? Mm -hmm. um, what is that, 151.999, Tim? Is that where the penalties are? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, it is. The very back page of. So, <coughs> page 38, 151.999, it states uh, section 159, 151.999, section B1A. Any person who violates the provision of this chapter or fails to comply with any of the requirements of this chapter will be subject to all necessary corrective actions. That's fine. If satisfactory corrective actions toward complying with the notice of violation are not made by the owner within 30 days, the county may seek a court order. The only concern I have is I, I think we should just delete the word corrective. It should say if satisfactory actions towards complying. I don't know what a corrective action is. I and mean, if I pick up the phone and call up a contractor, he says, I'll be out there in 45 days. I haven't corrected anything yet. It's, it's, it's an attempt to get a quote. So I'm distinguishing well, between an action in good faith towards compliance versus a corrective action, which to me, the connotation of corrective action, I've actually got shovels in the ground and I'm making changes. Understood. So I'd like to see the word corrective well, deleted. I think, and, and Ms. Ingalls, if you could correct me if I need to be corrected, please. When Whenever a notice of violation goes out, it it, it says what the corrective actions need to be. In other words, it, we don't just say you have to, to fix it. We say what you need to do to, to make the corrections, all right? So I think what this is doing is saying if you are making a, an effort towards those, and it could be you've got a contractor lined up to do that specific work, all right? If you need to do some grading and you have a contractor lined up to do the landscaping part of it at the end, we're going to say, well, well no, you've got to have a grading contractor to get that work. So I think what we're saying here is if you're taking steps towards the corrective actions which have been identified in the notice of violation, we're going to work with you, which we do automatically. I just want the board to understand we don't get to this point very often, all right, because we do everything we can to avoid that, this so, situation. But when you say a notice of violation, wouldn't it say correct the, war, correct the runoff problem? originating in the southwest corner. It doesn't say hire a contractor. It says correct, doesn't it? That, that's correct, but it will say exactly so what you need to do to make those corrections. In other words, you need to fix this swale. You need to fix the erosion. You need to you know, correct. Or if you have a failed structure, you need to correct that structure. And so if people have come to us and say, we have a contractor on board, you know, they sometimes they even, I think, show us contracts. You know, they say, we've got somebody lined up the weather's impeding us or whatever, we'll say, okay, you know, we're going to work with you on that. So I don't, I, I think that by saying the corrective actions, we're making sure we're referring back to the notice of violations. So we're linking this with the notice of violation as we move through the process. I think presently, um, I know you guys worked with people, and I know one case you've been bent over backwards working uh, with people to comply with this. But I think Commissioner Rothschild's major issue here is yeah, you're working there, but all of a sudden you three decide to retire and somebody else comes in and, you know, this is in the etched in stone here and they review this differently. Uh, you know, it could be uh, a real uh, problem for a person out here that uh, is, isn't, you know, got themselves in this situation. They, they put themselves there, but I know uh, I'm worried about that in the future, I guess. But it so does say that. corrective actions toward the, uh, my glasses off. Complying with the notice right, of violation. Toward complying. So yes. it's toward, it doesn't mean it's fixed, but you're taking actions to get it fixed. Yeah, That's actually, what that reads. Actually, it's and it says toward, yeah. right. It Let says toward it on there. Moving the word corrective somewhere else in the sentence. I think you'll like that. So it says satisfactory actions towards complying with the corrections required by the notice of violation are not made. Right. Move the word corrective. Okay. So it's a mod it's, so it's a, it's an adjective or a modifier of the notice of violation. If satisfactory actions toward complying with the corrections required by the notice of violation are not made, then we've got it. Now I'm good. I like. Are you okay with that? Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. Dennis. It's fine. Okay. You guys are under right both with that? chapters. Under both chapters, both we'll chapters. make that. Yep. So yep. You make yep. that change, and I will vote for this. Understood. Yeah. It's so done. Satisfactory actions <laughs> towards complying with the corrections required by the notice of violation are not made. I think that's clear. We're good. It's done. Okay. 
Anything else? We don't have any comment cards, Mr. President. Does any member of the public have any comments? <coughs> We have no comments. Okay. I don't think you received any. Uh, we did not. No, we did not. Then we need a motion to close the public hearing. Uh, maybe we close the public hearing. So, do we want the record open? You want, you want to leave it open for 10 days? I'm going to respectfully suggest that the, I like this chair. <laughs> <laughs> Since the new board will not have had the initial briefing, will not have had the public hearing, and will not have heard this discussion that, that we adopt these today. With the, the correction that, you, that you've directed us to do. All right. So you want to modify your motion, Commissioner Weaver? <laughs> to. I'll, I'll make it up. <laughs> Mr. President, I move that we close the record and accept the modifications to Section 150 and 151. 151 and 152. 151 and so accept the correction, the, the amendments to 151 and 152 as documented by staff today. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Uh, subject to the changes that we agreed to. Yes, sir. Uh, right, right. Is that, are we, is that, is that clear enough? Yeah. Yes. Okay, all right. Everybody okay with that? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, you commissioners. Appreciate, appreciate it very much. A little bit of compromise in here, but we're we're good. just keep the balance of power here between government and citizens. <laughs> you know. Thank you. Okay, we have yet another public hearing for adequate public facilities. Commissioners, this is what I'm calling a uh, proposed corrective amendment to Chapter 156. This is our adequate public facilities and concurrency management ordinance. Uh, ordinance number 2010-4 was, was adopted with an error. It was adopted by uh, the board on April 1st, 2010. It was put in our code book. And I'm going to paraphrase the, uh, the mistake. It, it's regarding the inadequacy of elementary schools, and it incorrectly states that no housing, and I'm paraphrasing, no housing development may be uh, approved by the Planning Commission when current or projected enrollment is equal to or greater than 20% of the state rated capacity. That is not right. So is it 120%? It's 120%. Right. 120% is, is the correct number, and that's consistent with the rest of the ordinance. I was ready to chew up the publisher when we, looked, we dug up the actual ordinance that was adopted eight years ago, and that number was so I think it's self-evident, gentlemen, that the 20% was a typographical error. We also know from years of applying this that we have been using 120%, correct, Tim? Yes. And, and therefore, I'm comfortable moving that the board adopt the, adapt, adopt the corrected ordinance, which is simply more than a correction of a typographical error. I will second that. Uh, okay. There's still public hearing. President, this was advertised in the Carroll County Times uh, on November 15th, 2018, and the 22nd, 2018. And uh, I received no comment cards from the public. Okay. Uh, no uh, written comments were received. Then we need a motion to close the public hearing first. Okay, then I'll move we close the public hearing and adopt the corrected ordinance as described by our county attorney. I'll second that with the understanding that. The error was made before the 59th board was seated, and this was not our mistake. And, and before the uh, county attorney. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need that part. I'm not going to speak to Mr. that because you were in the building. <laughs> so. Mr. Howard, I accept your friendly amendment. Okay. <laughs> All right. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. All right. We're moving on to area utility connection fees. With Mr. Castaway and Rob Burke, I believe, <coughs> but I don't see. Oh yeah, okay, I do see them. You guys are hiding in the back. Don't hide like that. <laughs> Good morning, commissioners. Good morning. So I believe the commissioners uh, requested this item on the agenda. Uh, we went back and reviewed the. Uh, tape of discussion uh, from a prior board session regarding the uh, timing of the requirement uh, for the payment of area connection charges related to uh, new development. Um, so at the board's pleasure, I can either do uh, a little bit of a background about what the current uh, process is and, and how, how it's applied. Um, 
or we can delve right into the to the meat of it so, however so, you so, want to proceed so, so let me keep us focused i asked for this after meeting with some developers and there was really a, a specific instance to supply so let me start by telling, saying where this doesn't apply clearly if we have a lack of water and sewer capability and, and and approving a 200 unit subdivision is going to require us to build more capacity or even to run the pipes we need to have the money as soon as possible to defray the cost of that no no, no dispute there but the interesting scenario that was painted to me, which is one that's quite likely in Eldersburg, Doug, Vic, is that we have the capacity, and more sort of capacity already in existence, and the developer himself has agreed to absorb the cost of, will absorb the cost of running all the pipes and conduits needed for the water and sewer, and he says, look, if I'm gonna spend the millions to run the water and sewer pipes, you don't have any additional capacity, it's because you already have the excess capacity. You're killing me, Rich. I gotta spend the millions to run the water and sewer, and then you're gonna make me pay the connection fees potentially years before I actually connect up, which is impossible to finance. And he says in other counties, the way they do it is you don't pay the water and sewer fees in those kinds of circumstances until such time as you pull the building permit. And I said, you know what? I said to the developer, if we have the water and sewer capacity, already so we don't have to add any more capacity on our end and if you're the one that's going to run the water and sewer lines at your expense then i would agree that in that situation it would be reasonable to defer the payment of the connection fees until you pull your building permits just so, that one situation so if that's the case how, how do we know who's planning on that capacity well how do how does that information come to well, us the capacity would be allocated at the time they record their plat their record plat right well, right now, it's the allocation is by is by payment. When they make the uh, purchase of their allocation of capacity, then we take on the commitment to provide such capacity. So right. I would argue then that at the time they sign a public works agreement and agree to put the water and sewer lines in, at that point in time, if we should, I think it's reasonable for us to take the position that if the developer agrees to absorb the millions of dollars to put the water and sewer lines in, at that point in time, in exchange for the developers agreeing to pay the cost of that, instead of the county, that we could we should go ahead and lock up the allocation for that development. Well, if, uh, doesn't that cause a problem though? If we're coming close to capacity, someone can lock up that capacity and then not do anything with the project for some period of time. Well, that's theoretically possible, but I'm going to I'm going to take the position that it's highly highly unlikely the developer would invest millions of dollars to dig up thousands of yards of concrete or grass to put in these lines if they weren't planning on developing. But didn't yeah, you but say, though, there could be a significant delay? That was part of the concern you had? What's the question, Doug? I, I thought that part of your concern was that it would be a long period of time before they'd hook up, and they're paying well in advance of when they'd need to. Well, that is a concern, too. I mean, even if it's only six months to a year, I mean, we could be talking a million dollars. The interest on a million dollars could run a developer thousands of dollars per month. But isn't the enterprise fund for sewer and water kind of underwater anyway? We don't have the funding or keep maintaining? Well, let, let me well I mean, we don't have adequate that. funding. Let me respond it. to that, Dick. That's a very good question. And here's my answer. <clears throat> if we have the excess capacity, then we're not gonna be adding anything to our water and sewer plants, so we have no capital expenditures. If the developer's gonna put in the water and sewer lines, that we have no, the county has no cost for running them, and if they're gonna hook up additional yeah, houses yeah. to it, then that's more people paying the bill, which would actually improve the financial situation of the enterprise fund. Couple things here. So, uh, area connection charges don't commingle with operating funds, so this doesn't get into the rest of the enterprise funds as far as repair and maintenance, as far as operating costs, personnel. Area connection charges are calculated to recover the cost of providing new capacity facilities, not operating the, the system. They don't commingle. So um, I think the piece we're missing is the reason the capacity exists and that uh, you know that would create the scenario where you could defer is because the capacity has already been constructed mm -hmm. and it's been constructed either with uh, the dollars we had on hand from others who've already paid theirs ahead to to reserve and create the capacity and primarily by issuing debt to build the capacity and so the payment coming from the developer you're talking about is really a reimbursement 
to meet the debt requirements of capacity that's already been constructed. Okay. So, um, so, you know, the you cash to pay the bonds comes from the connections. Okay, but I'm not saying that we shouldn't collect the money. I'm just saying we right. collect it if they sign a public works agreement and they agree to put the water and sewer lines in because we have a firm, we have the capacity, we simply wouldn't collect it until they pull their building permit. Let me bring up this scenario, and I'm not sure where this development is being constructed, but let's just use uh, as an example west of Gaither Road. If there's a development going in west of Gaither Road and there's a system to go to connect to everything, they will connect, the, they will sit back, and every developer is required if they do a development, whether they phase the project or they construct the, whole, the entire project as a whole, they put in all the water, sewer, and stormwater management systems in at the, at the onset of construction. Then they sit back and get a and get approval at that point to go ahead and build out the spec homes. That system, those lines do can have to eventually connect into our system. Where that connects in, if we're using Gaither Road as, a, as an example, we have to go to a pump station that was designed for, a, for about 100 homes to connect to that pump station. Now you're adding on a whole other development. So that the increase in capacity would have to happen to that pump station, that line that goes from that pump station to where that goes gravity, goes into Sykesville, upgrades would have to be for capacity in downtown Sykesville to that pump station to get it to the wastewater treatment plant. Each one of those projects could take a year, year and a half between design, permitting, mm -hmm. construction on the county side to make sure when they go to start connecting in those homes, they have a place to put that capacity to put that capacity of, and I use sewer as an example because if there's anything that we you know where we're tight we're right at about 80 81 80 point one percent of our allocation capacity at 85 percent you trigger with Maryland Department of the Environment we have to have a plan and start doing designs for an expansion. So suppose I think that's a valid example I hadn't considered. So suppose we said that we would collect fees at the time the public works agreement is signed, but only to the extent necessary to defray the cost of upgrading any pumping stations that are going to be needed to supply that capacity to the subdivision. What, you, what we're running into is when you're looking at, at the public works or the, the allocation, if, at, until there was actually a payment on those allocations, that developer, there, you know, even through the conceptual stage of the project, um, they do not own that capacity because that capacity, when they buy it, it is actually attached to, to attached to those properties. So if you have a hundred lot development, each lot now goes up by twenty thousand dollars in value because it had, it actually has allocation attached to that property for development and. But yet they, you know, that's where the payment comes in. But if somebody else comes in and say we have a thousand businesses and residential homes, you know, EDUs uh, equivalent um, dwelling units. Dwelling units, thank you. Um, that are left before we trigger that eighty-five percent. If some two other developments come in and a couple industrial properties come into place, that could take up that allocation in that meanwhile while that developer's constructing their lines. And they get priority because they're not those; they just haven't been paid. Those allocations have not been paid for. I mean, really, for the ordinance. I mean, given some of the constraints we have in the area we're in, I think this came up actually when we talked about the Warfield project. Um, is that if someone, and even even during the Freedom Plan, if someone even pays for the allocation and doesn't move forward, we're still tying up allocation. I mean, at that point, they've they've put money on the line. But it's still not the ideal situation for us. I mean, the use of allocation should be somewhat in accordance with, you know, the regular flow of things because what it does is it artificially accelerates how quickly we're going to have to expand our capacity. Right? But it, yes, but it also provides the time to do so. so I no, I totally agree. You know, so there's, yeah, I, 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 and so I think it's a balance. But the idea also is is that, you know, we. I hate to see a situation where someone gets a fundamentally different level of treatment because they happen to be close to or just after a capacity issue. You know, now there's some reality to that, but if you look at the long life of the area and the projects and those kinds of things, I had the same issue with the um, um, 
what was the fee for that we couldn't collect for schools? Uh, the impact, impact fee. Impact you know, it's like, well, and I understand the rules, but really over the course of time, you want things to be very even and very predictable, if they can be, right? So it's like, well, if I happen to come in at a time where we're really close or not so close, do I get a fundamentally different experience than if I was in the other situation? I think ideally we want that not to be the case. I think this change would create that, where uh, if you're nearing full capacity, then you've got, A, you'd be paying at subdivision at the PW Public Works Agreement time. The, the developer would be financing their area connection <coughs> and, um, and, then, and have the risk and potential of delay of building permits until the capacity is provided versus once the capacity is provided, then on the back side of that, you don't have to finance your area connection, you don't have to pay till building permit, and other users' dollars are paying the debt to have built the capacity. You create, you know, if that's a concern, that's the consistency and fairness so, so difference. The only difference is timing. Let me suggest perhaps a compromise here, because I think there's good arguments on both sides. Commissioner, see what you think of this. Suppose we take the position, if we know that the plants have capacity, if a developer signs a public works agreement, agrees to put in all the lines, then, then we would allow them to play half of their connection fees at the time they uh, sign the public works agreement and, put, and, and record their plat, and the other half at the time they pull their building permits. Just as a, a compromise, split it down. Let me, let me ask one question on that. If they are don't put the fees up until they connect, the taxpayers are actually footing the bill on this until uh, through the bond or if for not that. taxpayers, but well, the remaining utility. Our, our money is taxpayers' money. Not not in no. this case. This is all all stays within enterprise funds, so the burden falls to the remaining eleven thousand users. So it's either that fund floats the money or the developer floats the money until this is hooked up, correct? Well, is that oversimplification? Nothing, Wait. Well, I don't know about nothing to float unless they're up upgrading a pumping station. Well, and that's going to happen. You know that's Well, not always. Not always. Yeah. Sometimes right. it will happen. Right. Pump well, yeah. the, the, the calculation of the rate is specifically the projection of the total dollars needed to do all the projects divided by the anticipated eventual connections. I mean, there's, it's not, there's not extra money, there's not, it, it is exactly the amount it's exactly to right. the Here's best the of our Here's estimates to be able to provide. If you make it easier for them to, 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 to get the stuff built, once the stuff is built, it reduces the cost per, per user, per connection. If you already have excess capacity, you have a fixed cost that you're allocating over a larger number of households. So yes and no, I mean, uh, it, it, it does uh, for that moment, but it also accelerates how close we are to building the next expansion. Right, and the depreciation on that is also going to start to kick in, and it's going to take upgrades. More, the more use, the more upgrades, the more upgrade the pump. Well, I'd, kick in. I'd say. I mean, it's the master plan, the growth, the development drives the need for the capacity, not the other way around. The plant is built to provide the necessary service. Right. But Doug, keep in mind, Doug, we're not waiving the fees. We're still collecting 100 percent of the fees. Just for shifting the timing out slightly tonight. We're not giving them, it's not like the uh, impact fees where we waive them. Is We're right? still going to collect it all. Yeah, you change the timing, you change the, uh, again, the, the, so collecting it at, um, at subdivision and public works agreement gives, I mean, I don't know what the average time is, something in the neighborhood of three years, you know, of ability to plan and construct and permit for capacity. You know, building permit gives, you know, on average nine months or, you know, whatever it might be. So uh, if we would be nearing, so, so what would determine the trigger when we're getting close enough to going to need capacity to go back to requiring it at public works agreement and, and how will that go over with the first developer who now has to pay at public works agreement instead of deferring. Yep, I understand. And, it's and valid, how will they feel it's valid, treated? It's a valid concern. Of course, the thing, and, and I, I, I first don't have my notes with me, but I was assured that other other, jurors, other counties are requiring it at time of uh, building permit, though. 
so others are doing it. It's a valid question, Rob. It, I'm it, not diminishing right. the value. I understand and the I would question. say it would if increase. If you're at the wrong point in time, right. you get hit harder than if you're at the right point in time. But maybe the answer is that since we've had excess capacity over in Eldersburg for what a decade or more, may, maybe we adjust our you know maybe we adjust our business practices based on where we are in the development process. I mean, look at ag preservation. We built, we created ag preservation. One of the arguments 20 years ago was, well, we got to stop over where our schools are overpopulated. Well, now we're in a situation where there are people saying, well, ag preservation is helping de deflate the enrollment in our schools to the point where we have underpopulation. Maybe, you know, everything is, there's a, there's a, there was an engineer named sure. Guy Bias, an interesting quote on his wall, vice president of engineering at West Westing has said, everything is temporary. And the answer is maybe we just adjust our policies every five to ten years based on the build, the, 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 the economic and, and, and capacity restrictions that we're facing at the time. So, Commissioner Archer, what, what is the what is the problem we're trying to solve, though? I mean, what is the concern? Well, the, the developer's position is that when they have to lay out large sums of cash up front to to, to, to run buy the land, run the pipes, then pay connection fees, perhaps in some cases years before they connect, creates a serious uh, cash flow and financing problem for them. Well. Well, paying the connection fees years, years before they connect ensures them that the water and or sewer is available and ready to go when they actually connect. If they don't pay the connection fee, and my understanding is, from what we've discussed so far today, is that they're only being charged what it actually would cost. We're not putting excessive amounts of money in there and not getting charged any additional fee. It's not, it, it, they're being charged what it would cost that to, to run whatever we have to run on our side. For, 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 for what we, we need to They're do. basically buying into the total cost of the system. The majority of these cars on, aren't about what's on the piece of property they're developing. Right. The majority of the costs yes. exist in the plant that's down the, down the line. Right, exactly. But, uh, but they're, they're paying what it actually sure. costs. Correct. We're not charging anything extra. And in, in order to assure that they're going to have, be able to hook up when it's time to hook up, the fees have to be collected, I guess, when we're doing them right now, so you have time to do all the work that's necessary for this to happen. Right, and if and at the time when the, the minute they pay that fee, that water sewer connection, that water sewer allocation, is now attached to that property. It is an asset to that property yeah. Yeah. that is then if a two hundred another thousand home development comes in the next week, and five hundred there's only five hundred left on. 500 left before our, mm -hmm. we have to delay for an upgrade to the wastewater treatment plant, it, you know, which could put them back five years, you know, three to five years to get that constructed. Then that could be, you know, they're already locked in. They've already, they have their piece of the pot. So how many okay. airline tickets, rental cars, or King's Dominion tickets would you buy if you had to buy them three years in advance and pay for them three years in advance? Not many. King's Dominion, I'm like, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just trying to make a right, point we, here, and that's why I suggested maybe we compromise on a case like this, and maybe, but we, maybe we designate sections of the area. Uh, but, uh, but I think if, zones. but if you want a, a suite at the Marriott Marquis that overlooks Times Square on New Year's Eve, you probably would buy that hotel room two years in advance. You might be right. Yeah. So I think I think the scarcity is the issue. Yeah. Well, it is. It is, and I'm certainly not suggesting we do yeah. this in areas where we're pushing up, bumping against the limits of our capacity. When cases where we're not bumping up the limits of our capacity. It makes it easier to add those extra uh, properties on, which in fact defray the operating cost. Well, gentlemen, I, I, I want to—I promised uh, these particular developers that I would bring their arguments to the floor here. Sure. I brought them to the floor. We're not voting on anything today. No. It's briefing. I think one of the things that we should probably take a look at before deciding whether to just further is what our adjacent counties are doing. But I believe they're—they're—they're they're, they're, they're collecting a time of permit, and maybe perhaps the next board of commissioners will make a decision based on some maybe perhaps competitive concerns. And uh, if it turns out that I'm wrong, and they're all doing it this way, then I would suggest we do nothing. But if it turns out that, that uh, the, our adjacent counties are pulling them a time of permit, uh, collecting them in a time of permit as opposed to time of recording the plat, then I would suggest we should maybe look at the county and say in areas where we have excess capacity, perhaps we should adjust, make our, uh, make our, uh, our terms more competitive. That's all. And keep in mind, we don't want to be like adjoining counties in I any agree. aspect. So, uh, <laughs> I, I, agree. I think it was a point earlier made by you. So. I, I would say this is the sort of the most prudent, most conservative approach. Yeah. You know, we take on an obligation to provide the water sewer capacity, and this gives us the time and dollars to provide that capacity. Right. You know, other options, you know, would could also work, but you know. 
this is the starting point as I think where we are. Well, just to satisfy that concern, is, is the new board members are coming in and you're talking to them about connection fees and that kind of thing. Could you just acknowledge that, you know, this, this timing discussion happened? Sure. And, you know, I think that way, at least it's on the radar for them. Sure. Does that Not a problem sense? at all. Yes. All right, Case, thank Commissioner, you. Commissioner, Commissioner Frazier forgets. And, yeah. <laughs> you know. All right, thank All right. you. Very good. Thank now you. we're moving to a bid approval for removal and replacement of two AC units at the historic courthouse. Doug Lindsay and Cindy Miller. I'll try to forget. Trust it's pretty me. cold out to buy an air conditioning oh, unit. Get get it. It. It's probably going to sale right now. <laughs> I think we should wait until we're closer to capacity. <laughs> we should get a discount. Yeah, okay. <laughs> How cold are you? Oh. All right, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> so far. Yeah, we have several bit approvals today. Um, first one is going to be uh, we require two new air conditioning units at the historic courthouse. So the county requested bids. We received four, and the lowest bidder was Pro Air in the amount of $63,680. Any questions? So, uh, how much was it? 63000 mm -hmm. yep. 63000 yes. Correct. How old are the old units? A little bit, about 35 plus years old. Oh my gosh, they're, they're due. Now, are they <laughs> updated with energy efficient? Absolutely. Correct. Oh, yes. Units. I know there's some really great <coughs> energy efficient units out there coming. Uh, I don't know if uh, certain <coughs> names uh, pop up there, but uh, is this that type of unit being replaced in here, or this is traditional units? No, it's a uh, York High Sear, 16 Sear. Uh, York air conditioning rooftop unit, and we have a um, 10 ton split system also. We're now, did we on. specify York units in yes. here? Yes, correct. Why? We're trying to consolidate where we use one type of unit so it's easier to have people work on them and you keep your overhead down on parts. Mm -hmm. And with the, the staff that we have, we train them so eventually they're a very good unit. Are they the mm -hmm. Cadillac of units? No but they're pretty much the top of the line shelf just below it. I mean, we look at the cost, look at the real uh, reliability of them, and the, how we can purchase them where we're not a uh, long lead time getting units in. And, and does the 63,000, does that include installation? And yes. Correct. That's installed and ready to roll. All right, well, you're, I think your rationale makes perfect sense. So I'll move the Board of Commissioners approve the issuing of a purchase order to Pro Air for one 15 ton split AC unit and one 10 ton AC unit in the amount of $63,680 for use in the historic courthouse. Second. Motion and second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you. Now we're moving on with the bid approval for renovation project to soundproof the Office of Human Resources. Yep, you about said it all there. We are going to go out to bid to soundproof the Human Resources Office. Um, went out, we got three quotes. The lowest bidder was Starboard Construction, the amount of $52,830.63. Now, Mike, help us out here. What, 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 is, what are we actually doing? Is it all offices? Is it a conference room? Is it a, what's the? Actually, what it is, Commissioner, is removing all their uh, portable partitions down there. Um, and according to the different privacy acts. This will actually give each office down there so one personal information is explained to um, employees and stuff. This way it doesn't go out so everybody else can hear it. Right. This makes mm -hmm. perfect sense. How many yep. weeks is the renovation expected to take? I would say four weeks, to be honest with you. That's a fair number. But we're, we're doing all the offices then. Um, except for Kim's or um, Robbins. Okay. Yeah, but the other offices, yes, they're all portable offices. And um, I'm sorry, but um, Jackie's office down there. Right there. Yes. That's why I haven't gone down to talk about anything because they don't even overhear what I was going to say. <laughs> so now I can do that. Yeah. Wouldn't a cone of silence be cheaper? <laughs> <laughs> that never worked. That is the what best you, thing I've you, heard you say you, in four years. What are, you, <laughs> what are you trying to hide from that? Was, that was excellent. That was excellent. Oh, man. Explains right. why I saw you making a phone call with your shoe this morning. So that's a good deal. Well, generally, except, I mean, generally, uh, you know, having been in, in this field of business for Digital Equipment Corporation, I know that we were very careful about where mm -hmm. we uh, 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 allocated acoustical privacy. Mm -hmm. uh, 
projects with security issues and human resources were two of the top two where we yeah. had to protect yeah. the privacy. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Sure. All right. Just need a motion to make it make uh, sense more. <laughs> move the Board of Commissioners approve issuing a purchase order to starboard construction to soundproof the human resources offices in the amount of $52,830 and 63 cents. I'll second that. 63 cents. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. All right. Thank you. Commissioners, thank you. Couldn't hear you. No, I'm <laughs> Okay. It seems like we're spending an awful lot of money today. Do you think they're afraid the new folks won't, won't want to buy stuff? Or? Yeah, they don't have to spend anything. No. Yeah, well, that's right. <laughs> okay, next item, bid approval to update to, to design manual. Uh, Debbie Butler. I guess Mike is staying here. Yeah, Your name's not I'll on be the here list, for a while. though. Your name's not on the list. <laughs> but we'll keep you here. Don't worry about it. <laughs> So the uh, Bureau of Engineering uh, had the requirement to uh, update their design manual um, that they use. So we went out for a request for proposals. We received five. Um, after ranking the proposals technically and financially, we'd like to award to Whitman, Reichwart, and Associates in the amount of $245,279.17. So they put it in a really nice binder? Is that what you're... What? <laughs> The current manual that is being used is dated 1994. Yeah. Um, Scratch that out. And we <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What's a Sharpie cost? <laughs> and there have been a lot of changes to federal and state guidelines, yeah. as well as um, local uh, policies. I'll use stormwater management as an example. You know, so the whole goal is to bring the design manual up to date so that we're meeting all of the current regulations. And, and the manual is used by anybody who's designing or constructing, you know, roads, storm drains, bridges within the county. It's used a lot by the uh, private development community, and these are infrastructure that we're ultimately going to take over um, and become part of our system. So what are we actually paying them to do? They're going to go through the manual? They're going to go through, see what has changed, um, check with other counties to see, uh, which I've done a little bit of already, um, to see what they're currently doing, meet with um, several working groups along the way uh, to help write it, uh, get, get it in order, and then uh, meet with various uh, agents, agencies and uh, groups along the way okay. and then it's going to be in a like right now we don't it's online but it's a scanned PDF so we want to get it in a better format that we can put it on uh, the website wouldn't it be cheaper to hire someone internally to do this because they're going to our staff's going to rewrite this anyway basically recommendations from each area uh, and then all you, you have to coordinate, I know, with the state and federal government and all that, but... It, it's, uh, you're right, there certainly will be interaction with many bureaus, uh, whether it's development review, resource management, uh, the school board. It's, it's a very cumbersome task. It's a major task, and, and it's going to take how long? Uh, we're planning on a year. So that's, it, it's a considerable, considerable amount of time for us to dedicate somebody in-house to do that. That's why it's been 1994 since it's been done. Well, for, and what are they committing in terms of resources? I mean, how we get, who, for how long, for how much, what, 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 is the, what are their specs on what they're going to do for that? As far as the, what the consultant is providing? Yeah, I mean, is that for one consultant for that year? Is it for 10? Is it for no, a certain number of hours? No, it's one consultant. They're, they're charged with uh, the task of updating the manual for us and giving it in the format that we want. You know, so they'll provide all of their staff, um, office support, uh, CAD <laughs> drawings, because we're going to be redefining all of our plates that we have in the book. So they'll be providing all of those resources, as well as their time in meetings and uh, 
working groups, that, that sort of thing. And financially, were the, were the financial aspects of the bid, did you see other bids or was it a matter of? Oh, no, we took, yeah, we took a look at all the financials. Okay. We saw other bids. This was the so best value. There was? Yeah. It seems like an awful lot. I know it's a horrendous task to undertake, but it would almost be a type thing where you hire position a person to come in and do this for us for and honestly we're probably short-staffed enough in a lot of key areas that to bring on one more position I think would be difficult essentially that's what this is you know except we're hiring the company as we're opposed hiring to a, a company person. to do it and right. at that level but I think it's uh, you know if we hire a person for hundred twenty thousand to come in and do this it's a half the price of what we're getting from this company to do it. Uh, that's always an option. That would definitely I, I think you're being helped in the back here. Okay. <laughs> Good job. Um, Commissioner, uh, what we run into is while it would be great if we could do this with a single staff member, if you're talking with manual, and this is similar to some other uh, bureaus that we have, the manuals we're sitting that we're working with right now our PDF format, these are things that were typed back in typewriter days. These things, these documents weren't even put in the Word, word format. Um, all the drawings were done either on you know, onion paper, or they were they were drawn on a, on a desk with a T-square. You know, every, we need, this will be a full CAD staff going through putting it together all of our, all of our details, redoing, redoing the details to what the current standards are. So there's an AutoCAD staff doing the design work. There's going to be another part of that staff that'll be dedicated to writing the, the meat of this document. Then there's another part of the staff that'll be sitting back and be, you know, and reviewing state highway specifications and reviewing, uh, meeting with our staff, multiple levels of different departments and bureaus in order to make sure that the document, we have a full document to work with. Going forward, after this document is done, then it'll be a, a document, and this is for this, utilities doing the same thing, is going through the same process right now. It's a document that we can then maintain as time goes on, because then it's up to date, everything's current, everything's in, in current AutoCAD, everything's in current Word format, and then we can make those adjustments. You know, if a spec changes, we go in, we make the, we make the adjustment, we notify the development, you know, development community, they know that the change has been made, it's something we can do, and then at that point it's just a, it's a plug-in. But we, we, we don't have, that's the, this is to build that starting base, and you know, it's a two-inch document. Well, don't we know our operations better than anybody? We should, and somebody to do this working internally I think would be almost more efficient than going outside, because they're going to come back and rely on our staff anyway. Uh, to put a lot of this together, they're gonna to do the finishing touches and make it look good, but I'm, I'm just thinking it would be nice and then you have somebody to update this continuously. Well, again, maintenance of, of, we need to have a starting, we need to have a starting plot. Mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's a, you sat back and I'm just you know, asking the house already you coming in to put, you know, keep it updated with paint on the walls, change the color of the paint on the walls. We don't even have a structure. And that's what, we, that's what we're doing here is building that structure. If we hired a person to be like a county employee, first would, would I get to keep that person? <laughs> um, but they they also will need to learn, you know, what our practices are. You know, so it's not like me doing it because you know I've been using the manual, but you know they would also have to learn. Um, it, it would certainly slow down the process. Um, I, I do currently have an, a vacancy in in my bureau, and I'm, right now I'm not having any luck filling that. So to hire somebody to do just this one task, I think would be just as challenging. Is this something we budgeted for? Yes. Yes, in FY18, it was in that adopted budget. And how much do we budget to do it? 
250, I think. 250. Did that have anything to do with why they came in at 245? That wasn't advertised. No. We don't think everybody watches our show? Probably not that closely. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're breaking my heart, Mike. <laughs> How many months would this engagement take? Should a year. Yeah. A year. Nine months to a year is what's planned. And what's the mechanism by which, if they're going to go in and look at something and compare it to other jurisdictions, and then come back and say, okay, well, you're what out of sync with what's going on around you? Is this something you want to look at? Or, I mean, there's got to yes. be somewhat of a process to come back with those changes, right? Yes, that's they'll they'll do that, and and even some of the chapters that are in the book now, we may decide, well, that really should be a policy, not necessarily a chapter in the manual, or we may add something in. He's Women make, Recors done done. He's going to make a that lot decision. of this type of thing for many counties around Maryland. Mm -hmm. He's going to make decision if it's a policy or a guideline or whatever. Um. Well, we're going to have a working committee that involves, you know, many agencies, county agencies, and our staff. Way. Yeah, our staff. Yeah. Um, you know, DPW will be the main driver behind this. Sure. That's what I'm looking at. It seems like our staff's going to drive this. So we look at hiring a, a somebody to do this, guide it, make it happen with our staff working. Lot, uh, I'd say a lot cheaper than two hundred fifty thousand. So I, it's just my opinion, but it, it kind of caught me off guard on this one. Huh? I think if we try to do it internally, that's all they would be doing. I mean, we, we need yeah. extra help to get this thing going. It'll be years before it gets off the ground. I, I just think we need outside help. <clears throat> you paying there, for it? There have been several. Well, we're going to pay for it one way or another, whether it's... Well, I mean, if we pay for a person that's in-house to do this and working on it, if it takes 18 months, two years, you know, it's still cheaper than what we're looking at here. I'm, I'm just... I'm not using the manual every day, and I'm not uh, in that situation, but I'm just being uh, cautious, I guess, with the county funds. I understand. Any other questions? So the engineering, I mean, this is a technical writing job, right? Yes. So typically, I'm, I used to work at Westinghouse as an engineer. We had technical writers who were engineers. Is this going to be multi, multi -disci multiple disciplines of engineers or just one type of engineer that does this writing? Civil, structural, geotechnical. So they have that capacity within um, their staffing to provide all of those disciplines. So going back to Commissioner Weaver's uh, thoughts, if we tried to do this in-house, are you suggesting that we would have to hire, at least on a temporary basis, multiple disciplines of engineers? Uh, potentially. I'm not one not to want to make a decision on something, but you know, sort of in the in the structure of briefing and discussion and and decision and a quarter of a million dollar investment and two new commissioners coming on in a week. Uh, I don't know, and one not here. Um, if you've got concerns, I might want to just have that conversation. I don't. I don't know. It's time of is time of the essence, Mike, Deb, do we wait another week or two to do this? Do you want to punt it to the next you, point? You probably could, but I would just throw in there it was budgeted, it was planned, it was you know, something we knew we were going to be doing, so nothing's changed. Right. Um, the money was there, the board, this board, current board decided it was something we needed to do, so I, I don't know if punting it to the next board is going to make much difference. 
unique position you're in. <laughs> Give it to the other guys. Uh, no, um, no. I, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to vote. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to vote if you're ready to vote on it. I no, just, no, I'm, I'm messing with you since yeah. it's your last day. You know, <laughs> yeah, so. yeah. Uh, Actually, my filibuster will probably carry us but beyond midnight, but that's that's neither here nor there. Uh, yeah. It may be a good suggestion. Uh, I, I, what do you what do you feel, Commissioner Frazier? I mean, I don't think it's a bad idea to wait, but to be honest with you, I don't see the reason for waiting. I think, like we said, we've already we talked about this in the budget. We set money aside for it. It's less than what we had planned. We knew it was coming, and I do have confidence in our staff that this is possible. The, the yeah. best way to, to get it done. I mean, I'm good either way. I just think we could move it forward right now. Is this the only way to do it? What are our other alternatives? Well, to do it in house would be the other alternative, but that's unfortunately the reason it's been so long and even getting done because it, it's a uh, it's a very large task and it, it takes quite a bit of time and you know but you'd have to hire someone specifically just to work on this that's the only it would have to be that's the only thing they did no, and that process would take yeah i'd have Lord to how try long. and find somebody mm -hmm. to hire well and frankly <laughs> folks with these particular skills right now are well, in very, high very demand. high demand. Yes. Are I mean, people demand. are building yeah. as fast as they can. Yes. So. And Doug, I'm, I'm going to go right. ahead and suggest that in light of the fact that our staff is okay. thinly staffed, in light of the fact that uh, we would probably need to try to bring in multiple disciplines of engineers at a time when building is booming and they're going to be hard to get, I'm, I'm not sure there's going to be any, uh, uh, that the juice is worth the squeeze. So I, okay. I'm going to move that we award the contract for the updated design manual to Whitman Rencourt Associates LLP in the amount of 245000 Two hundred seventy-nine dollars and seventeen cents. All right, I'll second it. The motion in a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Reluctantly. Aye. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it very much. Yeah. Thank you. And, and, and just to be clear, because um, I have a tremendous amount of confidence in everything you've ever brought us. It's just our job to ask those questions. I understand. So, yeah. I so. understand. And, and Deb and Mike, thank you for all the great work you've done uh, for the Board of Commissioners and our citizens over the last eight years. Uh, love you guys, and you've always done a great job. Both of you have always done a, a super job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next item, FY19, Carroll Transit System Replacement Bus Purchase. Jeff Castaway, Stacey Nash. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right, uh, we're here today um, requesting the use of um, some funding that we have in place at this time uh, for the replacement of three buses that we have under the current transit system. Uh, we have three buses that are over 200,000 miles, and when the estimates were put together back the, over a year and a half ago, chassis costs have increased by $1,500 per unit. And in addition, um, look in looking at some of the requirements and what we have with our new system, the way we're running with uh, our Trailblazer system, uh, we'd also like to ask the, and request electronic destination sign be added to the front of the bus for our Trailblazer systems so we can start. And this is something we're looking to do move, for this upcoming bus coming being replaced and for also future train, uh, Trailblazer buses. Um, Unfortunately, when there's a change in the chassis costs, the, these are not eligible for um, any state or federal funding. So at that point, we are we have to come. We have that uh, funding that we're going to be responsible for. We originally budgeted in our under the transit system uh, for ten replacements. We do hit so our match for ten replacements uh, is the balance of that money is there. So we do have money within the fund. But we just need the permission to move ahead and use that to on, cover the chassis costs. On the list here, the, you have all three vehicles here. The additional funds for two of them is fifteen hundred dollars, and the third one is sixty-seven hundred. That's the electronic destination sign. Oh, okay. For that third vehicle. So this is just this is not 
the whole cost. This is just the differential because of the, the change, is what Correct. you're saying. Right. Yes. So it's just the incremental difference. Yes. You have the nine thousand seven hundred and forty two dollars. Okay. Now you we last week we had uh, the veterans or last Tuesday, whatever it was. We had the issue of the veterans buses. We're gonna have to change some of those. Does this have any impact on any no, of that? That's that's a discussion. That's another item that for this afternoon. Yeah, but this is not the, this is the regular but operating. But this wouldn't have. We can't combine the two. No, this is purchase. this is this is the transit. This is the regular transit system. Transit. So we've so already there's already been bus. approval for the replacement of three buses. This what happened was the cost came in higher with the cha the chassis changed to a mm. new chassis, so that cost increased. You know what the sad thing is? I think 3386, it might have been 70. One of those was one of the newest buses we had when I left being the transit director. <laughs> so sad that You've been is. away from that job? Uh, well, I've been here for eight years, so about eight years. <laughs> so the, almost to the so, day. Yeah. And, you know, 200,000 miles, what's realistic on these buses? We, well, we've been running well over 200,000, but uh, per, the, per the lots manual, um, local operating transit system manual for MTA, um, they do have a 200,000 200, mile life expectancy um, for, the, for turning them around. Because again, you start getting into structural, you, you start running into safety and then structural issues with you know, suspensions, et cetera. Mm -hmm. now, when we buy these buses now, do they stay licensed to MTA or they're licensed to the county? Are they registered to the county? Registered to the county. Okay. Okay. Yep, registered by the county, insured through through our contractor back to the county. And, and I just have to say, despite my leanings towards the uh, transit lady, I, I don't like the lighter shade of blue on the new trailblazers, just personally. I like the, the darker shade, but that's just me. <laughs> okay. I'm good. All right. <laughs> Any other questions? Then we're ready for a motion. Okay, I move the board of commissioners to approve the additional funding of nine. Where's this money come from, by the way? It's already in the. It's already in the fund. We just need approval oh, yeah. to use okay. it. Okay, yes. nine thousand seven hundred forty-two dollars for the purchase of three CTS buses. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. All right. Then I'll abstain. <clears throat> All right. Okay, next we move on to Crest approvals to use term contract for Hawk, Hawks Hill Road Culvert real, real, hold on, Rehabilitation Project. Wonder, try that, was that again? That was easy to say. <laughs> nope, one, once was enough. Say, yeah, say it five times fast. Okay. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. You know he's one of the ones staying, right? I know. <laughs> <laughs> you may want to be a little more selective here. <laughs> You want to take the lead? Sure. All right. This uh, is this is yours. Okay. This is uh, for a, a use of a term contract for culvert rehabilitation. Uh, the Department of Public Works Bureau <coughs> of Roads Operations has determined that the culvert under the Hawks Hill Road near the Greenwood Church Road is in poor operating condition. The culvert can be made structurally sound through a shock creek lining rehabilitation process rather than the traditional replacement approach, which would result in the approximate cost savings to the county of twenty thousand dollars the general in general this project consists of the installation of a wire reinforced five inch thick shot creek liner to the invert of the structural arch pipes additional work would include sealing of joints placing rebar and filling with voids the county has all necessary storm drainage easements and permitting is underway with the Maryland Department of the Environment. MDE has granted approval to proceed immediately with emergency work. The location will remain open to single lane through traffic with a flagging operation during the work activity and fully open to the remaining time. The estimated time of com to complete is six working days weather permitting. The quote submitted by ProShot Concrete Incorporated is $36,900. ProShot Concrete Incorporated has a term contractor in, term contract in place with the county and the funding for this work is available. 
please authorize the use of our terminal contractor, Pro Shock Concrete. The cost for these linings now is, from what I'm looking at, the difference is yep. going up a bit because originally it would be like less than half the cost of the, of the traditional way of replacing, and now it's about. It depends on the type of liner and the size of the culvert. Um, in this case, what's the size of the culvert? This is a six, uh, seventy se a seven foot culvert. Yeah, so you so they're huge. Right. So this is you're actually doing a concrete. This one's actually applying reinforcing steel, shock the concrete. Okay, yeah. So has there's to a be lot finished. more involved in this. Yes. Okay. Right. Okay. A lot of the smaller pipes, as you see, either in the sewer or our small smaller sewer uh, storm drain pipes, you can go in there and they can clean it out and they can pull a liner through right. there kind of inflated in place, cure in place with a heater and just be pulling all the way through and it could be a constant motion. But when you have a seven foot culvert, you're actually stopping the flow of water. You're okay. basically adding additional structure to it with, right. the, re with the concrete. Makes so sense. 20,000 yep. 20, we save here makes up for 20,000 we lost elsewhere, right? <laughs> yes, you're welcome for that, yeah. <laughs> President, I'll, I'll move yeah. the Board of Commissioners authorize the Department of Public Works to, author to utilize the term contract with Pro Shot Concrete Inc. for the Hawks Hill Road Culvert Rehabilitation Project. Second. Motion and second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Move on to bid approval for hydro jet cleaning FSK Force Main with being joined by Andy, Andy Watchner. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. Right. We are now requesting your approval to award a contract to specialized pipe technologies in the amount of $59,760 uh, to perform the hydrojet cleaning services at the Francis Scott Key Force Main. Um, this is a very specialized type of work. We we're only able to get one price, but we believe it to be fair. So we'd like to go ahead and award this contract. Okay. Mr. President, I'll move that we approve the award for the hydrojet cleaning services of the Francis Scott Key Force Main to specialized pipe technologies in the amount of $59,760. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Uh, aye. aye. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Bid approval, sewer improvements, Warfield section one. Yeah, for this award, we'd like to utilize Stan Balls Incorporated from Union Bridge, uh, their county term contractor. Uh, I'd like to award this contract to them in the amount of $70,297 uh, for the sewage improvements at the uh, Warfield section one. Are these improvements and upgrades? I mean, because of the new buildings that are coming in there, so we're making things larger. Yeah, when the system was when the system was taken over, um, it was there's parts of the system that were updated and upgraded, and there was some parts of the system that, I guess, in others' eyes, did not need to be upgraded. <clears throat> when it transferred over to the county, we need to bring them up to our standards, okay. and uh, that's what this work is to be completed. What he's telling you is, in my enthusiasm, I might have agreed as to a certain amount of as is in the uh, <laughs> final document, so. Okay. <laughs> this one of those as is. Yeah, yeah. Right. That'd be a good way to put it, Andy. Yeah. Uh, Mr. President, I'll move we approve the use of uh, the Stambaugh's Inc. term contract to provide sanitary sewer line and manhole improvement to Warfield Section 1 in Sykesville in the amount of $70,297. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Bid approval, change order to provide expanded construction management services. Yep, we are cur currently contracted with CDM Smith to perform contract management services for the, um, this is Schoolhouse Road pump station project. Uh, we'd like to explain, expand their scope of work and services, uh, so we'd like to make a change order to that current contract in the amount of $32,160. What do you mean expand their, their scope of services? We, we have a vacancy in utilities and the vacant uh, slot would, would be the project manager for, for, a, for this construction project. We simply do not have the manpower in place right now to take okay. care of these responsibilities. So they would just provide project management services? Right. Right. Yeah. But we are looking to fill that spot, aren't we? We are. Okay. Okay. Because the delay in filling that spot will offset some of the costs that we have to absorb mm -hmm. somewhere else anyhow, right? For That's correct. Project That's right. management, yeah. Okay. All right, Mr. President, I'll move that we approve the change order request for expanded construction management services for the Schoolhouse Road pumping station and force main project to CDM Smith in the amount of $32,160. I have a motion. I'll second that. 
Any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Next, bid approval, gaming square improvements. Next, we'd like to award a contract to Mid-Atlantic Utilities in the amount of $158,845 to perform the gaming square um, improvements. That's in the Robertsville community of Hampstead. What does that mean? <laughs> gaming <laughs> square, I don't know. Um, it, it, it's a road name. There, it, 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 it's a townhouse uh, community. This, this, these improvements involve two clusters of townhouses, a total of uh, 15 units. What has happened is the um, the, the sewer laterals would leave the rear uh, of the properties, and they the um, laterals and the cleanouts are approximately 24 feet deep until they reach the sewer main. They were built in 1989 with uh, PVC piping. The PVC piping is is unable to withstand the the, the shear forces that have been in place over the course of time. Mm -hmm. Over the past three years. We got five failures out there, which with laterals they cost about twenty-five to thirty thousand a piece to correct. So this will install a, a, a new main at a much higher uh, um, uh, depth, uh, or a lower depth, which will enhance the system and prevent any future uh, service calls for the area. So What's the new pipes going to be made out of? Uh, high, 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 high density plastic. Yeah, C900. Current state of the art. Right, C900, which is the blue pipe that we're using for current, even on some of our larger parts of our system. And it's a real thick walled PVC piping um, that give. Is this in town? Yeah, the, yeah, this is within, in the center of Roberts Field off yeah, of. Uh, I know yeah. where it is, but it's town limits, right? Within yeah. town limits. Yeah, yeah you, know where the, you know where the basket or the tennis courts mm -hmm. are located? Those back to those townhomes? That's all part of the game and square? Yeah. And everything comes. Every, you know, that slopes off right at where their fences are at the back. That's what. That's those are the connections we've been running. So into. we're responsible for all the upgrades on. We are. For for that because of the failures that have happened from what was okay. for those laterals. Uh, move that board of commissioners approve the use of mid uh, the use of the Mid Atlantic Utilities term contract to provide sanitary sewer line improvements to Gaming Square in Hampstead, the amount of one hundred fifty eight thousand eight hundred forty five dollars. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. All right. Now we're moving on to bid approval for purchase of 500 water meters. Our next request is to award the contract to LB Water in the amount of $155,195.58 for 500 water meters. Uh, this is part of an ongoing project. Years ago, we awarded a contract to LB water to uh, purchase water meters so we've been buying about a thousand a year this year the request is 500 but we've come to you every year um, for a portion of these purchases so this is just the continuation of that project where are the water meters water meters being replaced is it one particular spot in the county or just these will be primarily in the sykesville area um, once once this portion is complete our total will be up to about 8,500 I, I pearl type meters, and that leaves us about 2,400 left to, to uh, finish the project. Right. As meters age, they read less and less flow going through them. So I enjoy that as a homeowner. but I, <laughs> Yes, but it, we don't enjoy that as, a, as operating our, our system. Right, right. We need that, you know, that's the, you know, some of the revenue gap that we have. We did anticipate having 1,000, uh, you know, continuing on 1,000 this year and staying on that path so we don't run into the back of having to restart the replacements again, but you know, with budgetary restraints, we've had to cut that in half. All right. Any other questions? Move the Board of Commissioners approve the purchase of 500 IPERL water meters and FlexNet radio readers from LB Water in the amount of $155,195.58. Second. The motion is second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. We move on to bid approval for Accela Management System. Oh, we have new people coming up. We have Jacob Gregory and Mike Myers now. Oh, Jacob Gregory. The Microsoft. Our next request is to award the uh, annual maintenance and support renewal for the uh, Accela land management system. 
to excel it in the amount of $80,000. $246.29. This is just updates and everything that's required to keep the system current and functioning and exactly, yeah. yeah. It, it gives us um, the software upgrades that we need um, as they bring out new enhancements and it also allows us to troubleshoot issues as, as far as any problems with the software. And there's no, because of how I guess to find it is you're just not like a 20 different vendors for this you have to go with what you have because yeah, it's proprietary yeah, yeah. Software. So I thought, okay so is this the time of year we renew this every year is that mm -hmm. yes okay. what was the price last year or for the current year seventy three thousand Seven hundred eighty-seven, eighty-six dollars. That's a pretty big hike, nine percent. Are we able to on these multi-year contracts? We know we have an ongoing maintenance agreement up front. Negotiate caps on the inflationary figures. I think this is the biggest increase we've seen for a while, and so this is a more of a concern now. On what you're saying. Uh, it's something that we intend to keep an eye on. So why don't we tell them it's too big of an increase, tell them we want them to cut it back to a 3% increase. I think part of the increase may be due to um, we purchased some additional user licenses. And every time you purchase a license, it's the maintenance is, it goes up 20% for that license. So I think we did purchase, we did. there's additional 10 or 15 licenses in there that may inflated that number. So you're saying the scope of this contract is broader than the, than last year's? In terms and of yes, the and it may continue. Supported. There may be some continued growth of this product in the future. But this last year, those licenses we purchased is the biggest change we've had in several years as far as the number of licenses. Okay, so you're saying this is not all inflationary. Part of it is an increase in the quantity of licenses supported. Correct. That's okay. correct. All so right. is, is that a function of more departmental use of the system because we haven't had that much of an increase in staff, right? Right. Or is it new staff? Um, that's correct. Uh, we, we do have like uh, 12 different agencies in the county using the software. Um, the additional, we just had a lot, of, a lot of requests to use it to what we have running now and, and to um, check check different uh, record types and, and different activity that's going on. We've had more users uh, request it. So how many users do we have on an app, do you know? We have about uh, 71 now that's, that's using it. Okay. And uh, I don't expect that, that number increasing going forward. We have almost all the users that I think that are going to be using this land management system. Um, what what Jacob is referring to is down the road we still want to get GIS up and running yeah. um, to sell the GIS and and that may depending on you know what we find out with that and, and who it's going to benefit and, and, and who needs it that's where the you know additional it may increase down the road once we get GIS up and running okay all right any other questions I think so I'll move we award the contract for the Acela Land Management System Annual Maintenance and Support Renewal to Acela in the amount of $80,246.29. Second. Motion and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Now, the last item for this morning is bid approval for 18 mobile data, data terminals. Our final request is to purchase 18 mobile data terminals uh, from Dell Corporation in the amount of $80,911.80. Um, as you can see from the briefing paper, 10 of these are going to be for the uh, new school resource officers, and eight are replacements for our current Sheriff's Patrol fleet. Any questions? So. 10 for the school safety resource officers and eight for the sheriff's patrol fleet. Mm -hmm. Is the patrol fleet part of the school resource program? Or no, there were 10 new positions for the school resource officers with 10 new vehicles. So that's 
those are those ten, and then the other eight are separate so for the sheriff general norm- patrol. I, I, my memory's failing. Doesn't the sheriff normally pay for these things out of his own budget? No, Commissioner. It's part of my replacement schedule. Okay. All right. So this is budgeted? Yes, sir. Okay. And the 10 school safety resource officers, where are we with that? I know we allocated money. The state law was ambiguous. Did we actually make the decision to hire them? I don't recall. Well, the first round we did already, and then the the second round was going to be based on what the um, determination of adequate coverage was going to be. Right. And that was still something, I, still th- I think that's still something that's unfolding. Okay. But I think this is to bring that first wave fully. So we authorized the first 10. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. All right, I'm good then. Okay, yeah. thank you. Mm-hmm. All right, I'll move the Board of Commissioners award the contract for the purchase of 18 mobile data terminals to Dell Corporation, the amount of $80,911.80. Second. Motion to second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Mr. President, at this time I'll make a motion to recess till 1 o'clock. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. we have Jacob. Jacob. Do we? Thank you for all your support. Appreciate oh, it. You're very welcome. Good man. Thank you. Yeah. Oh. Thank you both and good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Never get those Corvettes, Mark. Plus the Hoody Charger. Yeah. What was this opportunity for your admission? Mr. President, you have one public comment from me. Okay. Thank you. Um, good, after, uh, good, morning, good morning, commissioners. Good morning. Um, and uh, so I want to, again, thank you for your service. I know that um, two of you, I think, is today that your last day, or this week, your last. It yes, sure is. So um, thank you again, and very best, uh, in all honesty, very best uh, thank wishes. Thank you, Mary. Very appreciate you, You'll that. be, bo- you know, in my prayers, in my thoughts. Thank you. And uh, so, as you know, I did want to mention a couple of things. Um, uh, yesterday, I did have a chance to go on and look at the video archive of a public meeting that was held, you know, in this building uh, back in, I don't know, February, March uh, of this year. So it's been quite some time. And it has to do with this whole comprehensive rezoning issue. By the way, thank you for putting your video archives on the website. <laughs> Um, yeah, you guys take a lot from, from me, so, <laughs> you know, I want to give you kudos where kudos, you know, are deserved. Um, and uh, getting to that part, though, um, of criticism, is that I noticed at the meeting that it was mentioned that our zoning code is going to be updated in two parts, and I've heard you all say that before. First, the text, and I guess that would go to public hearing, and then the map would go to public hearing. And I, I want to really um, suggest I'm going to be bringing this up again, um, that that be done together. And the reason is, as I was watching the meeting, I thought, you know, and I, and I heard one of the commissioners actually say at the meeting that, and I'm paraphrasing, correct me if I'm wrong, that this text change does not change the zoning. And you can correct me, but that was what it was. So, but the problem is the map, if I'm not mistaken, will when the map changes are done. And the problem is the text and the map are going to both be go into effect on the same day, if I'm not mistaken, according to what the acting director of planning said the other week. They're both going to go into effect on the same day. And I don't think it's fair, just my, my opinion, to, say, to ask the public to give public input on a text that's really being done in a vacuum. It's kind of like saying we're creating new, new uh, we're not going to have just business neighborhood retail and business general anymore. We're not going to have two categories. Now we're going to have three categories. Okay, it all sounds good in paper. It all sounds good in theory. I'll, I'll say as a public citizen, I'm all for that. It makes total logical sense. And we pass it, and then lo and behold, you know, down the road, now here's the zoning map. Now this property is going to be in this. This property is going to be, whoa, I'm not for that. Well, it's too late now, and it's kind of like a trap for the citizens. So we need to see all the information, the text and the map together, and, and not put the citizens between a rock and a hard place and kind of keep them in the dark. We really need to do it together. Thank you. Thank and you. again, thank you. Thank God you. bless you. And uh, I mean that with all sincerity. Thank and you, thank Mary. you for your service. Thank you, you too. Yep. And uh, actually, Commissioners, that, that makes sense. I mean, really, we should, they should both be put out at the same time. 
Well, I think that was something that they're, they, after the last discussion, they said they were going to address so that they were, um, the implementation happened at the same time and the information was going to be available. Right. Okay. So I think they're working on that, but, but we, we should double check. Okay. 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 Thank make, you. Make your motion, Commissioner. All right. I'll make a motion to recess till 1 o'clock. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.